Yeah, so uh, good. So we're the only ones. Um, but I wasn't thinking. I was just thinking, nah, I'll just have, we'll just record it on our own. And, uh, okay. Because I was going to tweet it out to see who would jump, who can just watch. Uh, right. But uh, since uh, we're both virgins in this area, we'll, uh, we'll just do this ourselves here. So, okay. Uh, so how's everything? Everything is going, man. It's a Monday morning. So, you know, I've got a whole lot to do and a whole, a, a little definite amount of time to do it in. I hear you. I hear you. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to delay too much longer. Uh, you got the gist of our conversation, uh, talking about how to do what you do and uh, how can, uh, should, this is a good idea for, uh, for military personnel to, to take on a recruiter and uh, what to expect and all. So, uh, you know, I am going to record it for video so that uh, uh, around that time we'll have a, a video presentation as well as an audio too. So uh, uh, if you don't mind that, uh, okay. then, uh, then uh, we're all good. But uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, your, your time. I'm trying to still set up my little camera here. I'm using my phone as opposed to my computer because, okay. uh, because the sound is just so much better uh, for, through an iPhone. So uh, I, as funny as it sounds, that's the way it works. Uh, so um, did you have any questions for me? Well, I know that you were planning on doing this for Veterans Day. So, what 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 got your mind thinking about you know veteran transition? I know that you do a lot of uh, job search, resume, uh, mm -hmm. career advice. What kind of got your idea thinking about doing a podcast for Veterans Day? Well, I did one last year, and um, I cut my teeth on um, doing uh, work for veterans and people working in the federal sector. Uh, when George Bush had did a um, had his BRAC initiative, I don't know if you heard about that. Right. In 2005, a lot of Army bases were closing, so I got a chance to go around in 2010, 2011 to several bases and work virtually with a lot of uh, federal workers and veterans. Um, uh, to help them transition to civilian careers or to another federal, um, to another federal career. So um, since that time, um, I've kept in touch with some of them, and uh, some of them, most of them, had done really well. So I've kind of gained and attained a heart for veterans. Plus, uh, not to mention, my oldest son is seriously thinking about going into the Air Force. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, my childhood friend is a colonel uh, and a CEO in the Air Force in, in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, and I've had some close ties to other friends as well. So, um, you know, I've never been personally in the military, but having experienced through those experiences, um, you know, I, I want to give uh, because of everything that you guys and what you guys do. So um, I love it. I, I love doing it, do, doing a show. I've even thought about doing um, uh, a, a possibly a podcast dedicated primarily and mostly to veterans. Uh, still in the works, still thinking mm -hmm. that through. But um, I just wanted to do this special show. I'd like to do it once a year, but may do it more in the future as well as I was saying. So that's why I'm doing what I do. Okay. So, so uh, let's get into uh, the blab, man. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to give you a short little introduction, and uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. Now I'm recording it. I'm recording it via blab. I'm also doing it in podcast at the same time. Uh, so both of these are pre-recorded, and uh, uh, of course I'll give you a heads up on you know, when I'll release both mm -hmm. uh, and it probably will be at different times. But uh, nevertheless, I'll give you a short introduction into yourself and then uh, we'll begin our conversation. OK. I just want to introduce to you all Sultan Camp 
He's a military career, well, military recruiter and career um, headhunter who works for Orion International, a company that finds civilian careers for military officers, enlisted technicians, and strong NCO leaders, as well as veterans who have already transitioned but are seeking a career change. His contributions have included in, have been included in media outlets such as Career Builder, Monster, Career Attraction, and Military Times. I just want to welcome to the show, uh, Sultan Camp. How are you? I'm doing better than good. How are you doing there, Mark? I'm doing great. Thanks for that. And thank you for cutting out a little time for us here at the Voice of Job Seekers. Now, for Veterans Day in particular, I want to just strictly focus in on, and though there'll be some principles that will apply to anyone, uh, talk about military careers and what you do. And I don't, I don't think we've talked about specifically what recruiters for military do, but basically you work for Orion International, a company, as I stated before, that you find uh, civilian careers for military personnel. Uh, could you tell us and give us a little bit of background how you got into it, uh, into recruiting and headhunting, and, um, and what this means to you as far as what you do for your work? Okay, um, so we wrapped up a career in the Navy after 20 years back in 2009 and um, always had a heart for career management and, and that particular discipline. So when I actually got out, Mark, I, I used to be a facilitator for the Navy's transition program in Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, did that for about two and a half years where I had the opportunity really to be a part of the transitions of 300 folks per week, 41 weeks out of the year. So roughly about 12,000 military professionals uh, yearly. So, uh, you know, I saw some transitions that went really well and then some transitions that didn't go so well. And, you know, what's, what were some common tie points or trends into those folks who do it successfully? Now, back in 2013, uh, I got approached by Orion, uh, Orion, <laughs> uh, it, I got approached by Orion uh, to be a long way out recruiter. So uh, at Orion, essentially, we've been around since 1991, and uh, it's the, the nation's largest military placement firm. Uh, what happens is that companies that want to hire veterans but may not necessarily know what, you know, an electronics technician or a fire control technician or uh, 91 Bravo in the Army does, uh, they use us to essentially source military candidates for them, screen them, uh, so, you know, put put exactly what they, they want in front of them. I always say we're the kind of like the e-harmony of the veterans. <laughs> uh, I like that. And, that. and that's probably a fair description of uh, what you do to put in plain terms. That's if somebody uses eHarmony, more or less. Right. But uh, so you've been at it, uh, you've been recruiting, it has, it's been a little bit more than two years as, as a whole, right? Right. Uh, working with, you know, when, when I was with the transition program, I really worked a lot with in-house and both in-house and third-party recruiters. Uh, mm -hmm. A few federal recruiters in there as well. So mm -hmm. uh, I would say altogether being in the HR, familiar with with recruiting per se, not as not as a role as a recruiter, probably about four years. Okay, okay. So in your experience, um, what should somebody expect you to do once they come in contact with you? Uh, your target, basically, your target is been Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, or uh, several other uh, um, military sectors, they come in contact with you. You're basically focused on helping them find a, a civilian career as opposed to another military or federal one. Absolutely. So uh, I always say that uh, once they have the, the holy trinity, as I refer to it, Mark, uh, they, they're a veteran or prior military or separating from active duty. That's one component. Uh, mm -hmm. They generally have a technical uh, or mechanical skill set. So that means that they are an electrician, an electronics technician, a mechanic, those mm -hmm. wrench turner wire twister specialties, junior military officers as well. Uh, and as long as they're geographically flexible, 
we can do that he e-harmony piece that we talked about uh right. those clients <laughs> before such as you know honeywell siemens uh non-dod civilian companies we put mm -hmm. them directly in front of the hiring manager so um when they when a candidate reaches out to us that you know the first thing that we really want to find out is what their preferences are so right. that way we can right. match match them up with what our clients are looking for Right. right. So, so what are some of the, the tougher, tougher um, uh, and probably uh, earphones might be better because I'm getting an echo on okay. the side, uh, but uh, what are some of the tougher fields that you recruit for? Electricians, Mark. Believe it or not, high voltage electricians are really, really challenging to, to find. Mm -hmm. uh, those are normally the most in-demand skill set. A lot of our companies are involved with high-speed manufacturing, so a lot of the skilled and manufacturing type skill, uh, backgrounds are in most demand right now. Mm. Okay, so uh, electricians, uh, you said high voltage um, specifically, um, not your normal house uh, apartment uh, but large companies with large generators and uh, a large infrastructure. Right. Absolutely. Okay. You have, uh, have you, um, is there a secret? And I know this for a fact, having done a little work with uh, um, recruiters and, and I talked to Karen Durkee about this. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, so I'm going to ask you the same questions. Uh, is there a challenge in decoding uh, a lot of the experience uh, from the military to the civilian so that it would be more plain uh, to a civilian employer or to uh, someone that is networking and wants to refer and is trying to explain what that person does? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, I, I would say that if the company is veterans friendly, uh, which means that there are veterans working there, that that challenge is a little bit less than if the company has no veterans experience whatsoever. Right. Uh, uh, so for example, you know, all of us at Orion, we're, we're veterans. So I know mm -hmm. that when I'm using social media, I know to look for a fire control technician or a nuke machinist mate, uh, mm -hmm. because those are the, the words that our veterans are gonna use. Now to answer your point, um, the challenge for us a little, comes up in that final piece, uh, the interviews. Mm -hmm. So uh, that person typically has the challenge of avoiding the acronyms, a lot of the terminology that they use in the uniform, as well as, uh, you know, a lot of our veterans, we're, we're such team players that we're really uh, averse to, to tooting our own horn, so to speak. So... Mm -hmm getting them to figure out, hey, this is what I did as opposed to what our team did. Okay, okay. So in your experience, uh, again, and probably getting feedback from interviews from the uh, companies that people are trying to transition to or get in front of or trying to interview with, is less more in your case in, in particularly just trying to someone explaining their accomplishments and or just trying to uh, find where's the sweet spot in trying to articulate what they are able to do as far as civilian terms. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, Mark. Uh, less is more. I, I'm a big fan of uh, while we're along the Dayton path, you know, you don't want to be the one to um, monopolize the entire conversation. Right. So, you know, you make you 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 give succinct answers. You don't want to be too short, but at the same time, you want to open it up for a discussion. Sure. Sure. Now, let's talk a little bit of how, you know, that transition. As far as someone trying to explain their culture, uh, what do you find some of the challenges as far as that, as far as them trying to translate their culture to the civilian culture, which are at times could be very different uh, than in what they're used to. Um, is, in other words, uh, not just we've talked a little bit about the language, but how people communicate now, 
how people are really into social media, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those kinds of aspects. What are some of the challenges you're, that uh, someone who's transitioning may have now? Okay, so one of the biggest challenges is that mental pivot from uh, wearing the uniform to actually thinking about transitions. A lot of times there are two words, Mark, that we never ever use in the military. Uh, the words fired and the words quit. So, mm -hmm. you know, we may say, hey, I'm putting in my papers or, you know, I've reached my, the end of my contract. Well, hey, if you're reaching to the end of your contract and you're getting out, you're quitting. Or mm -hmm. if the military said, hey, you've gotten to a point in your career where, um, you know, you, you have to move up or out, you're getting fired. Now, the, mm -hmm. the reason that that is so important, Mark, is that there's a mental trigger that happens with civilian employees if they're quitting and getting fired. Uh, there's mm. a sense of urgency. If you know that you were getting fired in a year, you would immediately start finding a way to find your next position. Or if you knew you were going to quit in a year, same thing. But because right. we really don't put it in that context, a lot of our transitioning military, to your point, will wait until literally they're at the point where they should have been interviewing three or four months ago, and now they're way behind the power curve. That's a very interesting point you brought up because we found that was to be the case where I worked once with those who were transitioning to civilian jobs. Is It was almost like there was a sort of an emotional block in understanding what's really happening. Uh, and, you know, some of them were wondering, is this really happening? And, right. And, and, you know, you can call it denial. I don't think it's a denial in the sense of the denying, they're not understanding completely what will happen uh, uh, to them at the end of what the, what they're said, uh, transition period will be right right you know is we, we simply just don't know what we don't know and right. you, the, and there was what a time back when you know you, your federal your federal and dod industries were so just ripe and with employment opportunities mm -hmm. they stumble out of the uniform on friday go to work on monday doing the same job making twice as much but unfortunately, because we saw that happen in the past, we assume that that's the reality now. So we don't understand, hey, you know what, what is the salary trend? What's, what's the employment opportunity trend? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what kind of coaching or does your organization or associate organizations are helping them to understand how the world of work is uh, occurring now? In other words, you know, the only thing that's really constant is change. Currently. Right. So really, um, people are preparing. I mean, civilians have the, have has the same mental block as well, but I think they might be more attached to because their friends are going through it. Uh, with military personnel, they're seeing, you know, their peers go through it, which is a totally different type of culture. So mm -hmm. how are you preparing them and how can someone who is listening to the interview prepare themselves to go through that same mental transition? Okay, so some of the way that, that we prepare our candidates, uh, you know, whether they've got 30 days left or two years left, we first mm -hmm. figure out what are, the, what are your preferences and what are, what are the priority for those? So mm -hmm. location, money, types of job. What's your number one? Then figure out number two. Number three works itself out. Okay. Mm -hmm. so once we've identified, here's a candidate that our clients pretty much will want uh, two years from now. Once we've got those priorities, then we start giving them some things to kind of some homework. First component is to really start reading up on what 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 do people like you currently do in the civilian world? Mm -hmm. So we give them examples of candidates that we've placed with similar backgrounds and what they're doing now. So this allows them to do a little bit, a bit of introspection because they may find out, hey, you know what? I want a job that, yeah, is focused on the technical stuff because that's a motivator for me. Um, mm -hmm. 
Now, once they get about 12 months out, then we really start working on the resume piece with them. And because we're so niche in the types of opportunities that we can show them, uh, you know, there's no need to fry a lot of brain cells working on the resume. We say, hey, here's what our clients like to see with people who, who's got backgrounds similar to yours. Plagiarism is encouraged. Just make it <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, then we start doing the mock interviews. The objective is, Mark, that once they hit that 90 to 120 day mark from when they're available to work, and some of them, you know, they they want to work while they're still on active duty. You know, they're on that separation leave and they've got three months of that. So once they give us their available date, we work back about 90 to 120 days. Uh, and then our objective is to really get them interview ready at that particular point. Um, the primary way that we do it is through a hiring conference. So we, we bring the hiring managers that make sense to one location. We bring the... Uh, the, the candidates to that same location, facilitate mm -hmm. those those interviews. And typically um, those candidates have about six or seven actual hiring managers that they're interviewing with, okay? Those hiring mm -hmm. managers then come to us at the end of that day and let us know which candidates they want to move forward with uh, or extend offers to. Now, are you finding that... Being, it sounds like there are going to be many candidates for one job. Uh, is that particularly the case here? I, I would say that our, ideally we, we want to show our clients about three or four candidates per opening. So the, the, from the client perspective, they have four candidates that want to live where their job is. Uh, the salary is what they're looking for and the skill sets they want to use is a good fit. Uh, so, yeah, so the lineup for each cl client is roughly about three or four candidates. And for the candidate's perspective, uh, they get to interview with six or seven or eight companies that are a good fit for them. Now, mm. they are very skilled and they interview very well. Now you've got the dynamics where some of our clients may be in love with the same candidate. Right. And that candidate may have multiple offers to choose from. Of course, we let, you know, we, we kind of uh, facilitate that discussion between parties as best as we can. Mm -hmm. For those who don't interview real well, uh, what do you encourage them to do? Do you encourage them to get involved with more mock interviews? Do you give them feedback as to why they may or may not get the job? Or Yeah, asking, uh, yeah so asking, typically... Gotcha. So typically our, our clients give us feedback sheets, interview feedback sheets on what they liked, what they didn't like with the candidates. Mm -hmm. So then we have the opportunity to really kind of correct that candidate or at least let them know some insights on what they're doing uh, not so effectively. So the next time that we potentially put them in front of a, a client, they can do better than they did the last time. Right. So how about those who, um, again, there's some people... It, because in the civilian world, probably one out of four people interview well naturally, if mm -hmm. that. And then the rest, the rest of us have to practice. <laughs> right. The uh, rest of us have to rigorously practice. So uh, you, have, you have tools for that. You have tools to help them uh, um, get better and to uh, um, increase their markability. Yes. And one of the things that I always suggest that they do, Mark, is to utilize their individual branch of service transition office. Mm -hmm. uh, almost every candidate that I speak to, um, regardless of their timeline, I suggest that they, they schedule a mock interview with that local employment counselor, simply mm -hmm. to have someone who is quote unquote impartial give them interview advice. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you know, just as well as I do, it's not a natural thing to interview. So no. the more you do it, the more you're going to get the butterflies out and get feedback that, you know, can uh, benefit before there's real opportunity on the table. Mm, yeah, that's that's the truth. And I'm afraid that's just uh, that's just the hardest one of the hardest parts of doing a job search is being able to sit in some front of someone and explain what you've accomplished, what you're able to do, and how that's going to make the employer much more uh, 
better, bigger, stronger um, in the marketplace. So that's something that you have to definitely sell. Uh, mm -hmm. How much how much time is involved in someone's preparation are you finding um, when they're making this transition? I mean, for most of us in the civilian world, it's unlikely unless we know we're gonna leave, unless we're one of the uh, few candidates that always having control over our career and how we present ourselves. Like I said, one out of four is probably generous, but uh, um, how, does that work for you guys and how, and what do you see uh, and how people turn that around? <laughs> so I'm a big fan of the 10% the rule, which is yeah. there are 10% of those folks that are transitioning that are going to take the process seriously. Even mm -hmm. before I became a recruiter, uh, like I mentioned, when I facilitated the, the, the Navy's transition program, 10% of the folks would actually utilize the insight of the f facilitators, the moderators, the employers on the employer panel, because we used to have employers come in and do a Q&A for about an hour and a half, two hours, right. and only 10% of the folks would hang around after and collect business cards. Here's the thing, and to answer your, your question, Mark, those 10% are going to dedicate a specific amount of time daily on their transitions, whether it's mm -hmm. only 15 minutes or two hours. I've seen it all across the spectrum, but they are intentional to say, hey, listen, I'm going to dedicate this time to what's my transition every day. Then that makes all the sense in the world uh, because it is a little bit, if you try to cram like a test, uh, you're likely to miss most of what you really need to concentrate on. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is, you concentrate on that 10%. I mean, if you're applying it all across the way, you apply, you master one thing at a time and then you move on to the next till you have a, a string of mastery, so to speak. Right. Love it. Love it. Well, you know, I don't want to take up too much of your time because you're a busy dude. Uh, <laughs> but I've always got time always, for stuff like this, man. It, it, well, but this, but this is great. And I sure appreciate it. Uh, if somebody wants to engage you on social media or through website uh, or any way that you prefer, uh, how can they? Uh, well, I, I would say that I make it pretty easy. First of all, if you're on LinkedIn, by all means, feel free to connect with me on there. Say, hey, listen, I watch Mark's show and I'll listen to it and I wanted to connect with you. Uh, you put my name in there, Sultan uh, Camp. That's what, Sultan, like the Sultan of Swing and last name Camp. Uh, you could also uh, reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Career Sultan, or you could just Google my name, uh, Sultan Camp, and uh, you should see my social media profiles pop up on there. I always say connect with me. Don't uh, don't go to the website. You can you can go to www.orioninternational.com, and uh, you know you could get on there. But I'm a big fan of old school techniques. Mark, give me a call. Absolutely, like we did several times <laughs> right? before we got to this interview. Though, I uh, appreciate your work, your articles, um, doing great work, keep it up. Uh, thanks for being part of the Voice of Job Seekers. Thank you, and have a good one there, Mark. Have a okay, that's it. We are done. So. Oh.